ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your host for this evening, Maz Jobrani. Hello, hello, New York, how are you? Welcome to the 45th International Emmys. I am Maz Jobrani, I'm your host. I am honored to be here tonight. What a group of beautiful people. Give it up for yourselves one more time. Give it up for yourselves one more time, beautiful people. Now, um, some of you don't know who, who I am, and uh, some of you do, um, and uh, probably because I brought you, my wife, I brought her, so she knows me. Um, uh, I am a comedian who was born in Iran and grew up in America. Um, I actually came to the U.S. in late 78, right around the time of the uh, Iranian Revolution as well as the hostage crisis. So that was almost 40 years ago. And uh, back then, nobody liked Iran. <laughs> Still, <laughs> nobody likes Iran. We've been in every travel ban the Trump administration has put out. We were in 1.0, 2.0, 3.0. Yeah, they put one out every couple months. It's like an iPhone update. They just keep coming. A lot of Americans didn't even realize there was a travel ban 3.0 because Trump uh, was able to distract them with the football kneeling weekend. And while people were concentrating on that, he just passed another travel ban 3.0. Now, the criticism of the travel bans had been that it was a Muslim ban because a lot of the countries in the travel ban, actually all of them had been Muslim countries in 1.0 and 2.0. But in 3.0, the administration made a point to show that they're not anti-Muslim and it's not a Muslim ban. They added three new countries to the travel ban uh, in an effort to show uh, how open they are. Uh, they added uh, North Korea. <laughs> I swear to God, I can't make that up. Um, yeah, I didn't know they were coming, but now they really can't come. <laughs> they, they also added Venezuelan diplomats. So not the whole country, just 10 guys from Venezuela can't come. <laughs> and they added Chad, which I thought was a guy but it turns out it's a country. <laughs> Chad is actually another Muslim country. Chad does not sound like a, Chad sounds like a Muslim country trying to pretend not to be a Muslim country. <laughs> Hi, we are Chad. <laughs> that's Skip and that's Phil. <laughs> now, um, I know that some of you might have voted for Trump here and uh, that's your problem. Um, I actually know immigrants that voted for Trump. There were immigrants that voted for Trump because they wanted fewer taxes. They ended up with fewer relatives. <laughs> but these things happen. Um, he actually won uh, almost uh, a little bit over a year ago. He actually won on this very stage. Yeah, this feels like the scene of a murder. Um, it was, uh, I actually don't think that he wanted to win. I really don't. Uh, he's a billionaire, megalomaniac businessman who likes to tweet. He did not want to win. He was saying crazier and crazier stuff, hoping that Americans would not vote for him. And if you don't believe me, you can just go watch the video of when he accepts the speech. It's the slowest walk I've ever seen when he accepted the, the victory for his ex acceptance speech. He just walks and he keeps stopping halfway. He just kept going, are you sure they voted for me? After all the crazy shit I said, they voted for me? And I knew he didn't want to win because he kept saying crazier and crazier stuff. I knew he didn't want to win when he came out and said that Barack Obama was the founder of ISIS. You guys remember that? He said Barack Obama was the founder of ISIS. And then the next day, he went on a conservative radio show and the guy tried to help him out. He said, do you mean that Barack Obama's policies led to the creation of ISIS and therefore where we are right now? And he goes, nope. I mean, Barack Obama was the founder of ISIS. I was like, this dude's trying to lose. Now, a lot of people say that uh, Trump must be good for comedy. Uh, I'm here to tell you he's not. He's driving us nuts. He keeps saying so much crazy stuff all the time. You know how hard it is to keep up with Trump? He doesn't give, we need time to develop our material. He won't give us time. I was working on a joke about the crowd size. Remember crowd size? He was obsessed with crowd size. I was working on a joke for that, and then he came out with chocolate cake. You guys remember chocolate cake? If you don't remember chocolate cake, go home tonight, YouTube it. It's the craziest thing I've seen in my entire life. He was doing a serious interview with a, a news organization about dropping bombs on Syria. And in the middle of the interview, he starts talking about dessert and chocolate cake. I swear to God, it's the craziest thing. He was like, yeah, we're dropping bombs on Syria. We're dropping bombs on Syria. And we had the most delicious chocolate cake. 
the most beautiful, delicious chocolate cake. I was watching, I go, what the hell is going on? I thought we're dropping chocolate cake on Syria. I got confused. I don't know what happens. I don't know, people. I don't know if like a message goes from his brain to his mouth in the middle of the interview that's like, just tell her about the cake. She's gonna wanna hear about the cake. I'm exhausted. But tonight, you guys, is not about Trump. Tonight is about the 45th International Emmy Awards. Give it up for yourselves again for being here as nominees. We are here to celebrate. Now, I gotta tell you, um, as the host of the International Emmy Awards, the best part of hosting the International Emmy Awards is that some people think that I'm hosting the actual Emmy Awards. I swear to God, I know some of you went through this, right? You told your parents, I'm, I'm nominated for International Emmy. Emmy, fantastic. I, uh, my mom thinks, when I called her up, my Iranian mother was so excited. I knew it, you made it, Moz. You're better than a Stephen Colbert. You're gonna kill it. She goes, what channel can I watch it and when? I'm gonna watch with my friends. I said, it's not on TV. She goes, oh. I go, it's in New York. Oh. I go, it's the International Emmy Awards. She goes, oh. She goes, good luck. <laughs> I told her mom, it's still prestigious. She goes, I'm sure it is. Uh, it sounds like a scam. Just make sure they pay you before you go up. I think the check's cleared, I don't know. Guys, don't get me wrong, I love all things international. I love to travel. I actually live in a very international household. I'm Iranian, my wife is Indian, our babysitter is Chinese. Our kids are confused. <laughs> I swear, no, it's crazy, because I'm Iranian, my wife Indian, the babysitter Chinese. Together we represent almost three billion people. And yet we don't have one single nomination tonight. How much do we suck? <laughs> or maybe the government won't let us export the material. Anyway, we'll find out. Um, however, Belgium uh, is here tonight with two nominees. Two nominees for tiny little Belgium. That's like one nominee for every 10 people that live there. Congratulations, guys. Thank you for coming. The UK is here tonight. The UK, where are you, UK? Yes, with six nominees. The UK with six nominees. They're trying to export as much as they can before Brexit. <laughs> That's right, we all know it. Mexico, Mexico. Yes. That's right. Mexico snuck in. No wall's gonna keep you out, people. Mexico has uh, one nominee, as well as they're getting the directorate award. Uh, we're gonna honor Emilio Oscaraga, Oscaraga. Where's Emilio Oscaraga, where is he? There he is, sir, how are you, sir? Give it up for Emilio Oscaraga right there. Of the Grupo Televisa. Pretty good accent, I think. Sir, it's amazing, I, uh, I'm excited. As you know, the, the controversy now is that America wants to build a wall to keep Mexicans out. But seeing how America has become what it is now under Trump, you may want to build a wall to keep us out. <laughs> a lot of people have come out of the woodworks. America now, we have our Nazis, we have uh, sexual predators, we have the Kardashians. Um, <laughs> you want to keep us out. We have, uh, we have the Trump family that are like the political Kardashians. Let's face it, we love to hate them. I like to say that the International Emmys is like the World Cup of TV. Would you agree to that? It's like the World Cup of TV? Some of you guys aren't convinced. <laughs> it is like the World Cup of TV, it is. And like the World Cup, a lot of Americans don't know what's happening. <laughs> We're aware of that, right? You know that? <laughs> what's that? Say what? On Telemundo, okay, so Mexicans know what's happening, but Americans still don't. I'm telling you, build the wall, we're coming. <laughs> Guys, tonight we have nominees from around the world. We have nominees from Argentina, Australia, Canada, Colombia, France, Germany, Japan, arigato, the Netherlands, Norway, the Philippines, Duterte, what the hell's going on there? South Africa, Thailand, 
Turkey, the US, and Brazil. Brazil! Yes! Goal, 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 goal! Brazil, that's how I expect you to uh, take your acceptance award, your acceptance speech has to be that. Goal! Just like that, for 30 seconds. That's all you get. There you go. Actually, any Spanish-speaking or Portuguese-speaking country, I'd prefer just goal, and that's it. That actually leads us to a very important point, you guys. Uh, this is called the 30-second rule. When you come up for your acceptance speech, please take 30 seconds and be done. Um, uh, you know, if you want to do it in your language, we won't even know what you're saying. <laughs> just make it quick. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm going to help you out. I will do this. I'm going to thank all of the winners. I'm gonna, on behalf of the winners, I'm going to thank their agents, their managers, and their publicists. <laughs> Bam. That saved you a few seconds, right? Yes. Now you can spend your time thanking the people who really got you here. Your parents, your spouses, and your immigration lawyer. <laughs> it's a good one, huh? Thank you. Okay, now lastly, before we get started, I want you to meet Matt. Where's Matt? He's not a country in Africa like Chad. He's just Matt. Where is Matt? Matt! Hello, Matt! Guys, Matt Askins is an assurance partner from the accounting firm of Ernst & Young. Right there, guys. Matt assures that the tabulation is accurate. That's the man. The buck stops with you, Matt. So while uh, his coworkers are at the office doing taxes, Matt is here making sure we don't give the wrong award to the wrong show. I mean, how hard can that be, right, Matt? And the winner is La La Land. No, no, Matt. Matt, no tequila for you till after the show, okay? <laughs> All right, guys, are you ready to get started? Are you ready to get started? 45th International <laughs> Emmy Awards. If you enjoyed that video or any of the other videos you've seen on my channel, make sure to subscribe and tell your friends to subscribe too, or I'll track you down and make you subscribe. I can do that. I have ways.